Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. On today's show, we're going to be discussing this trade idea that Bleach Report threw out there where they had the Chicago Bulls receiving Jeremy Grant and Malcolm Brogdon, but they are giving up Patrick Williams via sign-and-trade, Alonzo Ball, Javon Carter, and a 2024 first-round pick. Now, before I give you guys my thoughts on this trade, I actually just want to get you guys involved here early on today's show. Would you accept this deal of Jeremy Grant, Malcolm Brogdon heading to Chicago, but the Bulls are giving up Patrick Williams, Alonzo Ball, Javon Carter, and a 2024 first-round pick? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. No, there is absolutely no way I am doing this deal. Um, you know, maybe a lot of you guys think this Bulls team and this Bulls core does have potential, you know, if they do end up running it back next season. But, you know, Bleach Report dropped this trade idea, and, he, and they said trades for some of the most hopeless teams in the NBA. This kind of speaks to how they view the Chicago Bulls moving forward. But let's just break this trade down, and I want to start off with what, you know, the Bulls are giving up here. You know, you're giving up Patrick Williams via sign and trade, and I am in the camp that even though Patrick Williams has been extremely disappointed to start his NBA career, has not lived up to that fourth overall pick expectations, but I would still bring him back. No, I am not giving him the 200 plus million dollars that he said he wanted before the season. I'm not even coming close to that, but I still believe in the player, and my eyes don't lie with him. I'm not saying he could be an all-star, but he could be a really, really solid 3 and D guy in the NBA, and those just long wings who can knock it down from downtown and also guard multiple positions are just so valuable. So I wouldn't want to give up with um, wouldn't want to give up on him just yet. And uh, excuse me, and after all, he is still you know just a kid. But then also, you're giving up Alonzo Ball in this trade. Um, so you're telling me the Bulls they're going to sit this entire Lonzo Ball injury kind of era. And they are not going to wait for him, or they're going to trade him just before he is expected to get back. I don't think the Bulls would do that, or would I do that? Because, you know, Lonzo, we did get the report a couple weeks ago that he is dunking again. He's moving very well. We saw videos of him, you know, attacking the basket during a couple drills, and he looks good. Do I think Lonzo Ball can get back to his old self? Probably not. But I believe in the player, and I believe in the person of who Lonzo is. It may not be the same version of Lonzo, but we will get a effective version of Lonzo Ball. I still really believe that. I think he, you know, he plays winning basketball and, you know, I wouldn't, I just, I just wouldn't want to give him up. Javon Carter, I'm cool with giving him up in a trade. Like that's not the part of this deal that's holding me up. But honestly, this is the worst part of this deal is the Bulls giving up a 2024 first round pick. So the Chicago Bulls already limited draft capital here moving uh, in the future. They're going to give up their only first round pick for next season for Jeremy Grant and Malcolm Brogdon. And I'll talk about those two players in a second because I am, you know, fans of their game. But, I mean, this is just an overwhelming haul for two guys that necessarily aren't going to move the needle too, too much in Chicago. And, you know, and this this upcoming draft class is not the best. Like, it does not have the top in talent. doesn't have the Victor Wembanyama, you know, Zion Williamson type of guys. But they got solid ball players. Like, I would love a guy like Donovan Klingon out of UConn, or even maybe, screw it, take a chance on, or take a flyer on a guy like Zach Eady. You know, there are really good college prospects, uh, or prospects that are playing in college that I wouldn't mind the Bulls taking in that, you know, 10 to 15 range, so I would be against giving up the first round pick. Frankly, I just think it's, uh, it would just be dumb of Chicago, and you're also giving up on, you know, two of your kind of uh, higher potential players in Patrick Williams and Lonzo Ball. I just, I just, I just really just don't get this trade. But I do want to talk about if this trade were to go down, how Jeremy Grant and Malcolm Brogdon would fit in on this basketball team and talk about what Bleach Report had to say because they had the Bulls in this hypothetical trade going all in on this offseason and running it back with the same core. But first, I do want to give a big time shout out to today's sponsor, and that is Factor. If you guys head to factormeals.com slash Bulls chat 50, we will hook you guys up with 50% off. That's code Bulls chat 50 at factormeals.com slash bullschat50 to get 50% off. What is Factor Meals? It is two-minute meals that help you fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Pancakes, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No prep, no mess meals. Factor Meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, 
cooking or clean up needed and it's flexible for your schedule this is why i love factor you can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week plus you can pause or reschedule those meals and your deliveries at any time factor is the perfect and i mean the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required head to factormeals.com slash bowls chat 50 and use promo code bowls chat 50 we'll hook you guys up with 50 percent off because i love you guys so much a link for that in the comments and description of today's show all right let's break down jeremy grant and malcolm brogdon to uh, close out today's show and i'll tell you what jeremy grant um when he signed that mega deal this summer it was the five for 160 you know, I thought he was overpaid. Like when I first saw that deal, I was like, man, they're really giving all, all that money to Jeremy Grant. But I'll tell you what, he's a solid basketball player. You know, he comes in at six foot seven, 210 pounds, long wingspan, and he's having a really good year on a terrible Portland Trailblazers team. And it, it, also, the efficiency isn't bad as well. He's shooting over 40% from downtown, but averaging 21 a night, three and a half boards, 2.8 assists, and just a terrible basketball environment that is Portland. Like, if he would come to Chicago and the Bulls would put out a lineup of, let's just say, Kobe White, Io DeSumo, DeMar DeRozan, um, obviously we'd have to bring him back, Jeremy Grant, and then Nikola Vucevic, I don't, I don't necessarily think that lineup's doing too much, but I do think that's a playoff team if that's what the Bulls want to do. And that's also my take with this trade. It's like, what's the expectation in Chicago? What are we trying to accomplish? Because, of, hey, if we're trying to get to the playoffs and lose first round – this is a great trade for the Chicago Bulls. If y'all are cool with that, if you guys want to go win 41 games next season or maybe 39 games, make the first round of the playoffs and lose to the number one seed, this is your trade. But if you have title aspirations, if you want to go eventually get the Bulls back as being one of the faces of the NBA, you don't do this. You start over. You hit the draft. You maybe reset a little bit. You trade Levine. You try to move off Nikola Vucevic. You do whatever you can to kind of reset here and just get back to Chicago Bulls basketball because I'm sick of being in this NBA middle ground. And, you know, I was actually talking to my dad before I got to work today, and we were just talking about the Chicago Bulls a little bit. And, you know, I was just telling him, I'm like, I feel like the season went literally the worst way possible for the Chicago Bulls because they didn't sell anybody at the trade deadline, you know, Yes, Kobe White and Ayo DeSumo developed, which was great. It was great seeing them taking that next step. But you're still at the ninth seed in the Eastern Conference. You're going to make the play in tournament, but not make the NBA playoffs. And you're going to be picking 13th, 14th in the upcoming NBA draft. At least we have our first round pick this season. But whoever you draft at 13 or 14 is not going to move the needle by any means, especially in this year's draft class. I just think it's been a terrible year for the Chicago Bulls. And yet again, the front office is just okay with being mediocre actually no screw that they are okay with being a bad basketball team and that's what the Chicago Bulls are and they're gonna chalk it up to oh we didn't have Zach Levine we didn't have Lonzo Ball once we get those guys back it's all gonna change I promise you it's not you gotta rip this band-aid off and a trade like this would just keep the Bulls in NBA purgatory for I mean it would I mean it would just keep the Bulls at the ninth seed maybe they would get up to the eighth seed with a trade like this but I would just absolutely hate it. But again, let me know. If you guys disagree with me, give me an A for accept or a D for decline. But we're going to hop on out of here. Happy Easter, all of you guys. See you guys next time. Go Bulls.